Hello, and welcome to this service of virtual Christian worship. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church in Crawfordsville, Indiana. On behalf of our church family, our elders, deacons, and every member of our congregation, we make you welcome. We're glad that you're with us. I imagine there are some new faces on the other side of the screen, and I look forward to meeting you as circumstances permit. We are uh, in the 12 days of Christmas between December 25 and January 6, the day of Epiphany. This is in the church calendar, the second Sunday of Christmas. And uh, so we will continue uh, to sing our carols and to hear the story of uh, Christ's life after his birth this Sunday. Uh, the scriptures take us to when his parents are presenting him as a young baby uh, in the temple. Um, we are grateful that God has gathered us. We're thankful that we are in a new year. I said a prayer silently before the service began, this recording began, that Lord, although we are worshiping this first Sunday of the year uh, remotely, let us please, by your grace, be worshiping together uh, in person uh, at, before this year is out. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now join together in our call to worship. It comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. A child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Christ is born in Bethlehem. O come, let us adore him. Our opening hymn is sung by Jenny Feit Swick and her husband, Brian Swick. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. confession. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Please join me in our prayer of confession. O oh God, our past mistakes and current sins cast a shadow over our future. Our choices and ways have separated us from our life in Christ. In your mercy, forgive us. Help us to change. Give us wisdom and courage to know and do what is right. As we follow Christ into the new year, help us follow his star and share his love. Amen. Let us now continue to confess our sins in silence. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Jesus Christ. And Christ did not come to condemn us, but to save us. He was born and he lived for us. He died and was raised for us. Christ now reigns for us and prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a part of God's new creation. Our old lives have already passed away, and our new life in Christ is here. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Holy God, in Jesus your grace appears, bringing salvation to all. Help us to ponder your words of love by the light of your spirit that we may proclaim glad tidings of peace and welcome Christ into our world. Amen. Our gospel passage today comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 30. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. Joseph and Mary brought the baby Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit told Simeon that he would not see death before he had seen the Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took the baby Jesus in his arms, praising God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, after this season of getting together with maybe not in person during this time of pandemic, but virtually, we've gotten in touch with our family members. And I think it's safe to say all of us could, could agree to the truth of this statement. Everybody's got at least one, let's call them interesting family member, one odd bird in the family tree, an eccentric, a curmudgeon, a square peg in a family of round holes someone who's just a little bit crazy. In my family, that person was Aunt Mary Jane. In the days before seatbelts, Aunt Jage, that's what my young cousins and I called her, Aunt Jage would take us for rides in her big Pontiac on what she called Whee Roads. She'd gun the car and we'd rise out of our seats and lift over this hills, our stomachs rising within us, all of us giggling and crying out, Whee! Looking back, that probably wasn't the safest way to entertain small children. Aunt Jage was a true eccentric. Her wild creativity peaked at Christmas. When you opened a gift from Aunt Jage in our family's gift exchange, you were in for a surprise every time because Aunt Jage made her Christmas presents. One year, all of the men and even us boys all got 
neckties, which Mary Jane had crocheted. If you ever had tried to tie in a half Windsor knot one of those crocheted neckties, the knot would be the size of a softball. I remember Dad and his face as he opened up his gift from her and saw his crocheted necktie. He just stared down into the box and he paused for a long time and then he looked up and he said, Jage, you really shouldn't have. Well, that's the way we all felt about Aunt Jage's gifts. Aunt Jage, you really shouldn't have. From bathrobes made out of curtain fabric to stocking caps into which you could easily insert an entire bowling ball, inevitably, the words that came to mind whenever you got one of her special gifts were, you shouldn't have. If I'd been Simeon, that old man in the temple, that would have been my response to God. God had told Simeon that he wasn't going to pass away until he had seen the Messiah. And Simeon probably According to conventional wisdom, he probably expected a warrior king, some mighty man of war who was going to come in and throw out the hated Roman occupation and usher in the glory days, a return to Israel's full political and military might. Maybe Simeon thought that God would also maybe show him along with this soldier savior an entire legion of warriors at his back. I would have thought that a glimpse of the Messiah would be glory beaming down from heaven. I mean, you know, heaven come to earth. Earth transformed into God's vision for us all. If I'd been Simeon, and if God had told me to get to the temple to see salvation, I would have expected all of this, but all I would have seen was what Simeon saw, a baby. What? Wait a minute, a baby? That's it? And not even a royal baby? Not, I mean, not a kid from Jerusalem's elite families, just a snotty-nosed, smelly Galilean baby from a hick family who could only afford the cheapest offering you could make according to the law, a couple of lousy old pigeons. Seeing baby Jesus, I think my response would have been, thanks Lord, you really shouldn't have. I would have missed the gift but faithful old Simeon didn't. Remembering scripture, Simeon knew from Isaiah that God's ways are not our ways, that a shoot shall spring forth from the stump of Jesse, and that Isaiah said, I, God, am about to do a new thing. It springs forth. Do you not perceive it? By grace, Simeon did perceive it. He perceived it, and he received it. Taking the baby Jesus in his arms, Simeon, his face beaming, prayed, Lord, thank you. Now I can bow out because I can bow down before my Savior. You know, I've heard people over the years say, Something like, you know, it'd just be great to live in Jesus' day. You know, you'd, you'd be right there. You'd see all the miracles. You'd hear all the teachings right from Jesus' mouth. You would really, truly believe. But you know what? If you think about it, that opportunity is here right now. Not the opportunity for time travel, but the opportunity to simply be in this time which God has given us with Jesus, who is here today. What if 
the odd, hard, less than ideal situation you're in right now is really the means and the moment through which God's salvation is coming. What if your darkness is the very thing through which God's light will come? I don't believe that God causes bad things in order to, to bless us. But I know and believe with all my heart that God certainly does bring goodness out of difficulty to take away our death and to give us life. Jesus is the improbable miracle that saves, that changes the world by changing us, by giving us the victory over the world so that love prevails. Knowing that I am a new creation, Knowing that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Knowing that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death or through the valley of anything else, I have nothing to fear. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they do comfort me, and I shall survive. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord and seek to do God's will. Those promises in Scripture, God's word to us, are true. And we know that is so because Jesus Christ is risen today. Christ lives. He was born, lived, ministered, was crucified, dead, and buried, and raised in order to make us all a new creation. Christ assumed our human condition. Christ became one with us so we could become one with God. You shouldn't have, God. You really shouldn't have. You shouldn't have suffered and died for me. You shouldn't have but you did because you love me, because you love us all. That saving truth is ours to live today. Be open to the unexpected ways God comes to save. Participate in those saving ways by sharing them with others. Forgive Bless, pray, share, love. As you embrace Jesus by making his life your own, hard times will still come. They come to us all. But your days will be with Christ. You will go with him toward God's kingdom of love and justice and peace. That is the gift incarnate in Jesus who comes, who is here to establish that kingdom and to save us all. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, here we are in the beginning days of a new year. Lord, we have all been through a brutal year of pandemic, of uh, social strife and political uh, division. We pray, O oh God, that you will help us all to work with you to make this year a good one. Lord, we thank you that the vaccine for the coronavirus continues to arrive. We pray, Lord, that until all of us are inoculated, that you will continue to protect all healthcare workers and frontline workers and essential workers who all selflessly give of themselves each day in order to keep us safe and to keep this nation afloat and this world running. Lord, all around us, their shining example is evident. Help us to recognize that and to follow you by 
emulating them. We pray, Lord, for our community. It is a time, Lord, when temperatures plunge and oftentimes heating bills can't be paid. Our neighbors often go hungry. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to open our hearts to you by opening our hearts to them. Help us to share generously so that everyone has in this winter season enough to live. We pray, O oh God, for all students and teachers as schools begin to return to uh, after a winter recess. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will bless and protect all who teach and all who learn, and that, Lord, you will help our schools to be places not only of of health and safety, but also places of knowledge and wisdom and growth. We ask, O oh Lord, your blessings upon the ministries housed in our facility, those that are beyond our congregation, but who are partners with us in sharing this space. We ask your blessings upon the Fish Clothing Pantry, upon the Montessori School of Crawfordsville, upon the recovery groups and child and family counseling. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will let your healing be known, that you will let your blessings flow, that you will help all who are addicted to recover, and that you will help all who are wounded to rise and return to greater wholeness and health and life. We ask, Lord, your grace upon all who struggle with seasonal depression, for all who are anxious, and for all who are despairing. O oh Lord, transform their darkness with your light. Take away their despair and grant them hope, and fill their lives each day with purpose and energy and joy. We ask, O oh Lord, your grace upon all who are in need of healing, we pray for those who have the coronavirus, for those who are quarantined, waiting good test results, that showing that they don't have the coronavirus. We ask your grace upon Alger, upon Noreen's friend, Patricia, upon Deb and Noreen's daughter, Camille, who continues to recover from the coronavirus. Be with Jim and Becky, Nanette, Doug and Nancy, Roger, Betty and Dick, Marty, Stephanie, Carrie, Bill and Linda, Peg and her family, Alex, Alan, Barb, and Pam. O oh Lord, speed their healing and grant them everything they need to be whole and to enjoy each day with full health and life. O oh God, we ask your blessings upon all who are grieving, remembering especially Nancy Davis and her family, Mandy Beck King and her family, Kyle and Brittany and their family, the family and friends of John Haynes, Jim and Rob and their family, Joyce Ledgerwood and her family, Helen Milligan's family, and Don and Dottie Sperry and their family. O oh Lord, as they grieve, Help them to feel your presence. Transform their tears by your tenderness and transform their pain by your peace. Oh God, we ask you to continue to bless and be with those who are in transition. Be with Kevin and Laura as they continue to recover physically and emotionally from their house fire. Bless Arlene who is in a new, in a new memory care unit Bless college students uh, in our congregation who may be returning or may not be returning to classes and to campuses. We ask your blessings on our neighboring college that you will bless them and help them all continue their studies and work. We pray for those needing protection, asking your grace for Hillary's grandfather, Lloyd, and we ask your grace, O oh God, for all who serve to protect us. Lord, keep them safe. Lord, we come with many other burdens and concerns. Help us to surrender uh, those before your throne of grace, trusting in your steadfast love and mercy. So Lord, in that mercy, receive now these, our silent prayers.
Oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. to step into this new year, let us cultivate the ability to see God's surprising presence that comes in many disguised ways. And let us open our hearts to follow in Christ's clear ways of love and mercy and compassion and peace. For as we do, we shall embrace the Messiah. We shall find our salvation and we shall live the life God seeks to give us all. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.